Hello. Uh, I'm going to talk about combating narrow boat loneliness. Yes. You see, I've made it quite clear that I get lonely on this boat. I mean, imagine living in a space that's at best six foot wide. It's slightly longer than most in that it's 66 foot end to end, but only about 51 gusting 52 foot of livable space. And that's compartmentalized between galley, dinette, you know, saloon, office, bathroom, cabin at the front end. Um, but yeah, and this is this is quite a, a large boat by comparison to others, and I am mindful of that. But it's the space inside, it's the the narrowness, hence the term narrow boat. I don't know if people suffer from loneliness, I'm sure they do, on a wide beam. I was on a wide beam not so long ago, and it's more like a house. And I don't think I would get the cabin fever that I have on this boat. And that's brought on ordinarily by the amount of light that we don't have at this time of year. To combat loneliness, I, I have uh, visitors. I mean, Andy came on the boat last week. And I showed you that last week, and he's come on the boat again this week. But it's the same journey. I've just split it up to make you think that I've got more friends. Or the fact that Andy's... Anyway, you get the point. And sometimes Paul comes on the boat and uh, we have a chat and, and, you know, there are other people. And, and you know, um, let's be honest, I, 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 my girlfriend comes on the boat occasionally. But, yeah, not anymore. So this, this loneliness thing, it doesn't get the better of me. I just want to talk about it because I feel it's right that I talk about what life is like as a solo boater. Some don't feel lonely. Lloyd, further up that way, I'm going to meet him next week. Um, further up that way, he loves he loves being on his own. Absolutely loves it. Me, not so much. So it is a very individualistic thing that I'm going to talk about. And when I talk to you on in the camera, you on the other side of the camera, that is me kind of expressing my views what i feel at that particular time which reminds me if you haven't subscribed to the channel give it a go hey i'm doing my bit for those who may want to live this life on the canal because it's not as easy as you think but i'm going to show you in this video later on i'm going to show you what i do to amuse myself when i'm Feeling a little bit alone. Only fans. <laughs> no. um, but, you know, comment below if you. Why do I. Why, why, why am I. Why am I even considering only fans? No, no, that does. No, no. But, um, well, I don't know. Um, but I'm going to show you what I do at night to keep myself happy. Run the VT. This couple passed me when I was on uh, when I was heading towards the lock. They seem to be able to get through the locks really quickly. To be honest. Bella's wife was on the lock below, sorting that out. Andy was just catching up, learning the ropes. Off they go, look. Now, I've mentioned this not so long ago, maybe not on this channel, but to a number of people, that some of the speeders on the canals are not necessarily higher boaters, 
but they are the older generation I've noted, because no one shouts at them. I mean, case in point. Left me for dust, they did. Now here comes this swing bridgey thing. Andy's doing the swing bridge. This is one of my main fears, I think, coming to do this bridge thing. Good job he's here. I would have liked to have done it on my own, but why, why suffer? The trouble is with this swing bridge, you have to moor the boat on the off side and there's not a lot of room. Then you get off the boat and do what Andy does. And then you moor the boat on the off side next to the swing bridge where there again is not a lot of room. Close the bridge and then get back on your boat. Bit of a nightmare. Can be done though. He's certainly getting the hang of the locks now. Understood it all. Cutting about. Look at him. Look at him. Now this is normal time on the boat, it does take a while to, to get anywhere really. Oh and look, there's that couple in the lock in front, waited for us they did. With a cup of tea. Andy look, naturally as if he's been doing locks all his life, even larging it up with one of the passers-by. Good lad, well done. Sun's out. In the shade, a bit chilly. I don't want to put a coat on just yet. A bit chilly though. In the sun, lovely. Mate, you've been on the boat for a while, what do you think? I think it's a lovely experience. Um, it's relaxing, it's chilled, and uh, I'm very jealous of you. Although, <laughs> I don't know whether I could do it, but uh, yeah, it's for. Uh, for a once-off or maybe uh, an occasional visit, it's, it's lovely. Thank you for inviting me. Mate, I don't know. So why is it you say that um, it's not for you? Um, it's probably, I'm probably not the person to uh, live in such a small space. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I basically, I don't think I could sort of uh, live in such a small space. I like to uh, have a bit more uh, room to stretch out. Okay, yeah, fair one. And you are quite tall, so do you actually fit on the boat? I don't fit on this little bit here, I know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whacked your head a few times. Uh, but I don't know, I mean, I don't know how big your bed is, but I don't want to try out either. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I put it down to maybe like a, a caravan holiday. It's nice for a short period, but not for, not for me for, for a long time. No, mate, yeah, get it. But yeah, but it's, it, I must admit, this is. 
I, I think the weather's helped today as well. Massively. If, it's, if it was lashing down with rain, then maybe... Uh, I don't think I would have invited <laughs> you for starters. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's true, yeah. But yeah, it, I mean, we've had, we've had a lovely time so far. Uh, I've, I think I'm now experienced enough to handle locks on my own. <laughs> you are? I was out of the boat and then, um, well, I just had to guide Andy through 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 the lock with one gate closed and he did very well actually he didn't knock the boat at all good job well done it is a lovely day sun's on your back lovely and um there's a couple in front that we've been sharing the locks with i'm not going to knock them but at the same time there are times i just want to take my time and they are on a mission and it's kind of spoilt it has. It's spoilt my little cruise with Andy because we could talk as we're going through the locks, we can have a chat and it's just, yeah, it ruined it a little bit, unfortunately. And one, where, how do you say to people, look, crack on, don't bother waiting for me. I suppose well, I could do that. But they are a nice couple and they have waited and they have done the opening up all of the locks and it has made it so much easier. But at the same time, Anyway, I'm not going to moan because had Andy not been with me, I'd have thought, oh, they are just the right couple <laughs> doing all the locks for me. Well done. Andy's doing some steering, which gives me a opportunity to do something called filming. Without being stuck and tied to the tiller, I can wander around the boat. Oh, isn't this a change, eh? Look at that. Look at those views that I can never see. Lovely. And. There you see a pheasant. There it is, look. <laughs> Well, that's a chicken. <laughs> Beautiful blue sky. Even the canal looks blue, but it's not. It's just reflection from the sky. This is the benefits of having somebody else on the boat with you. Doesn't that happen often? Call me if you need me. <laughs> Looking through the porthole window as Andy's steering the boat. And here we have Church Lock. It's called Church Lock because there's a church next to the lock. It's no longer a church, it's a house. Nice house, but it's muddy towpath. Disappointing, really, but um, you know that's that's life. Nice area to moor in the middle of nowhere. And here's the sunrise uh, from the lock looking towards church, the church. You can see it there, the bell tower. As I said, it's now a house, but with graves and ghosts and all the stuff that goes with it. Nice though. I've got into Instagram. I think a lot of so social media is a load of old conk. But Instagram, Oh, do you know what? I, I think 
I think some of it's useful um, and it inspires me in, in many respects. So um, I thought I'd uh, share some of the good stuff with you. What? <laughs> some of it's brilliant. Some of it's reactions. So um, you won't necessarily see what I'm looking at. I got tagged um, in an absolute beauty on Facebook last night. I was from Lad Bible, and they were talking about the origins of your nickname. But I'm going to read a few of these out for you. Jay, you haven't seen any of these. I've hidden them from you. Mm. My dad had a mate who's got half his ear missing, and his nickname is 18 months because he's only got an ear and a half. <laughs> Richard Henderson writes, I worked with a guy who had one big hand and one small hand. He was known as the clock. <laughs> Darren Allen writes, I knew a fellow whose nickname was Uncle Ben's because he had a cyst removed from his sack. Um, a boil in the bag. <laughs> Mark O'Brien writes, worked at a factory and there was this guy called Keith there. It took me ages to realise that his real name was Keith, but he had an eye missing. <laughs> I'm laughing at him more than the joke. Some of these things are, are, are inspiring. Um, colours of... I mean, that reel there. Now, these are random song, all improvised. This is a dance routine. Um, I suspect the uh, whoever the instructor is, is is saying, like, you and you, get on there and, and, and do a dance routine to this song. These... This couple are amazing. I, I just think truly inspiring stuff. I've I've subscribed to them. I think they're brilliant. Not to them, but you know what I mean. And here's another one. See, these people that do this. They're doing it, a dance routine in the street. That, 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 that to me shows extreme confidence. I mean, I don't think I could do that dance routine in the street. Well, one, because I can't dance, and two, I haven't got the confidence. But And what surprises me is the people walking around I think it is perfectly normal. Narcissistic people will go to any lengths to prove that they are not the toxic ones. They will do anything to manipulate and control a situation and set the narrative so that everyone in the world around them believes that they are okay, they are not toxic, they're friendly, they're nice, and you are the problem. True. It's the TikTokers. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. See, this is the shuffle thing. Um, I think these, these three kids They're are probably teenagers, but I mean, look at that. I don't think I'll ever get that good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely amazing. Hey, look at this fella. Oh, yes. If he can do it, see what I mean about inspiration. <laughs> Dog's owner came home after after three years. Um, I think some of these are like. If you were to watch this without the music, does it have the same effect?
Oh, laughter is the key. It, to me, anyway, laughter is the key to combating loneliness. Laughter is the key to happiness. Happiness is the key to laughter. I love being happy. Um, you know, I love laughing. You know, I, I just thought that that <laughs> those little clips I saw on Instagram just amazing. Uh, sometimes we forget because life gets in the way of creating happiness. You'd think creating happiness would be easy, wouldn't you? But sometimes I think life and its chores gets in the way of happiness. I think, you know, if you can find something that makes you happy and do that when you're lonely and do that every day, then I think that's, that's certainly one way of combating loneliness. And that's how I combat loneliness on, on the narrowboat. Agree, disagree, comment below as you always do. And um, I'll see you next week. So thanks for watching, thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing. Those of you that have it, if you haven't subscribed, give it a go because I talk about stuff on the narrowboat that reflects my life. Ciao.